everyone. Thank you for coming back to the last session. The first speaker of the last session is Lulu Tai from Dr. Helen Kotila. She's going to talk about several HIV, INSTI affect, immune cell proliferation activation, and differentiation ex vivo. All right. Thank you, Lulu. Okay, as of 2021, there are around 38 million people living with HIV worldwide. Antiretrovirals have drastically improved life expectancies of these individuals. However, treatment is lifelong. Uh, HIV antiretroviral therapy can inhibit different stages of the viral replication. So from the binding or fusion to the CD4 cells to the reverse transcription of HIV RNA. One particular class of the antiretrovirals I'm interested in are the ones that inhibit the integration of HIV into the genome. The integrase strand transfer inhibitors, or INSTIs. So there are five INSTIs currently available from raltegravir, elvitegravir, dolotegravir, bictegravir, and cabotegravir. These drugs are either a one or two pill a daily dose, or for cabotegravir, a once a monthly intramuscular injection, reducing the pill burden for those requiring HIV to a great extent. Dolotegravir and Bictegravir are now recommended by the WHO for initial regimen. That means those who newly acquire HIV will be, on this will be on these drugs, and these are rapidly becoming the most popular HIV drugs worldwide. Um, older antiretrovirals, as more and more people began adding them to their regimens, have shown different toxicities, so we're, we want to investigate whether INSTEs do this as well. So, Past experiments in the lab have shown that some INSTEs inhibit proliferation and increase apoptosis. So to do these experiments, we isolated PBMC, so peripheral blood mononucleated cells, from nine healthy individuals. We then plated them and exposed them to INSTEs, so the five INSTEs, at 1XC max, which is the peak plasma concentration in a person's blood. We then stimulated them with anti-CD3, CD28, to proliferate the T cells. We waited for six days and then did flow cytometry. In the graph, we have, sorry, in the figure, we have the five different INSTI treatments as well as the unactivated and untreated controls. All samples were normalized to the DMSO vehicle control. So as we can see, with BIC and EVG treatment, there is a decrease in division index similar to the unactivated controls, indicating that BIC and EVG are inhibiting the proliferation of these cells. We also saw that BIC increases apoptosis. So this led us to the question, why are some of the INSTEs inhibiting the proliferation? Do, they, do some INSTEs potentially delay immune activation? So before we look into that, we, one measure of immune activation is T cell differentiation. So T cells differentiate from naive to central memory to effector memory and TEMRA. And on the schematic below, naive cells express both CD27 and CD45 RA. And they are in the top right quadrant. As they differentiate into central memory cells, they lose the CD45 RA, and as they continue to differentiate, they lose both markers. And once they are terminally differentiated, or TEMRA, they, they regain the CD45 RA marker. So cells from a healthy individual are, that are unactivated are mainly naive cells, with some cells residing in the central memory and effective memory compartment. However, once you activate these cells, there is a diff they shift away, so they differentiate away from the naive compartment, and lie mo more or less in the central memory and infected memory compartment. Another marker of T cell activation is ac activation markers. So one of the earliest cell surface antigens expressed by T cells after simulation is CD69. Once CD69 is expressed, um, it acts as a co-stimulatory molecule for activation and proliferation. C69's um, expression rapidly rises within the first 24 hours of activation and slowly levels off after three, four days. HLADR is a marker on T cells for late activation when its expression usually appears a bit later and peaks around the four or five day mark. So we saw that some INSTEs inhibit immune activation and we were wondering how, what could be potentially what's happening there. So could it be, a sustained early activation marker resulting in uh, maybe inhibition of some cascades that are required for cell proliferation? Or could it be a delayed uh, reaction in all the activation marker rising resulting in just non-proliferating cells? So this is an example of potential effect of INSTEs or antiretrovirals on immune health that would not be detected during clinical trials. 
So here I measured CD4 cell activation markers with the entities exposures. All, all the samples are normalized to DMSO, and this was a preliminary experiment. We can see that potentially with BIC and CAP exposure, there is an elevation in the early expression marker. So this is after six days of sitting in a well and proliferating. So this means that this, th there is no, there's either a sus sustained early activation marker or a delay in the early, activ early activation marker happening here. In addition, the late activation marker, we see that with EVG and CAP treatment, there is a decrease um, in late activation marker expression, very similar to the unactivated controls. When we look at the T cell differentiation with, T with NC exposure, we see that with big treatment, um, the cells do not differentiate, the cells are appearing not to differentiate away from the naive compartment into the central and infector memory compartment. And we can see an elevated proportion of naive cells with big treatments. And you can see that there is a decreased level of central memory and effector memory cells within the two individuals. However, this is not seen with all the biological replicates, but this was a preliminary uh, exploratory experiment. Um, so we can see that with some of the NCD exposures, we see that there's some modifications on how much, um, how the differentiation or the activation markers are being affected, which warrants potential further investigation to see what is happening. And because this was a preliminary experiment where I isolated PBNCs from healthy volunteers and exposed them to NCDs and activated them, and I waited six days, so I did not touch these cells for six days, and I did flow cytometry to measure the proliferation, differentiation, and activation. So to get a better picture of what is happening, I plan on doing nine individual replicates where I isolate PBMCs from Canadian Blood Services NEDCAT volunteer blood. I would then expose the NCs at both 0.5 and 1XC max, stimulate with T cell activator, and then I would do flow cytometry on a daily basis, so instead of just once, and I can monitor how exactly the activation, proliferation, and differentiation is changing over time. And with this, we can, we can obtain a clearer picture of how exactly NCDs are potentially affecting immune health and proliferation, which is not generally studied um, in this field. And with that, I'd like to thank you, my lab, and the funders for making this research possible. Thank you very much, Lily. Do you have any questions for Luna? Yeah, just a quick question. So, um, how specific do you think this is to T cells? And epidemiologically, people who are on antivirals for a long period of time, you start finding things like COPD increases in them. They get it much earlier than the standard population. And I've always wondered whether that's a reflection of impaired T cell function or a reflection of the antivirals having an effect on tissue, stem cells, or other things. So if you look at dendritic cells or other cell types, do you find there's an activation or a uh, proliferation defect in those two? Um, so I usually only look at T cell activation. I look at both CD4 and CD8 cells. I've not really looked at the other cell types. Yeah. Um, but antiviral virals are not just specific to T cells, like they can enter other cells and yeah, inhibit so different integrases. So CD68 and, and um, HLA on, on, on dendritic cells, for example, might also be impaired too. Yes, yeah. exactly. Lulu, great talk. Uh, I have a question about, because of these T cells, they have an impaired memory cell formation, do patients are, are chronically on these drugs, uh, do they have an, uh, a very, uh, are they more susceptible to uh, recurrent infections? So another part of my project looks at, um, for example, T cell senescence and differentiation and people who are living with HIV of chronic viral infections. We find that individuals who do live with HIV have more um, chronic and latent viral infections. Um, yeah, I think so. that answer your question. Any more questions?